Democrat isn't the only pharmaceutical company that is importing these drugs. They're just the world market leader. Now, it's the U.S. Department of Justice that's obviously making this huge push to ban guns and take guns away from everyone. But we'll look at 2013. So in 2013, they would say about, about 12,000 people were killed in gun violence in the United States, 30 people a day. So that's, you know, about, about 12,000 people. We'll take a look at the overdose death rates from pharmaceutical drugs in 2013. 25,000 total from prescription drugs, uh, male and female, 25,000 in 2013. If you're looking just at opioid pain relievers, which is what Malincrot specializes in, 18,000, 16,000 here. So m much, much more than gun violence. Uh, you can look at the fact of abuse here. 6.2 million Americans abuse prescription uh, type drugs, non-medicinal purposes, more than cocaine, heroin, hallucinogens, and inhalants combined. Um, these are obviously young people. There is an increase in young adults abusing these prescription pills. And then just looking in one metro area alone, more than half of the deaths involved these prescription opiates. So this is just one metro area that they're kind of collating this data from. So as you can see, drug overdoses and pharmaceutical drugs are always popping up in these mass shootings, right? But they never want to talk about the pharmaceuticals. They never want to point out how that is always one of the key indicators in these mass shootings. It's always the guns, when clearly prescription opioids are much more dangerous, killing many more people than guns here in America. That's what we need to be talking about. So that, I thought, was a really interesting, a little bit of information, going back with Malincrot Chemical Works, who is you know, largely responsible for contaminating the St. Louis area while they were secretly dumping off this nuclear material, and they're continuing to contaminate the population of the United States today. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888 253 3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of all of my experience. It was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity, so it had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity, and they needed they really effectively said we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was it was it, it's an extreme challenge. Uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time, and basically what we've done is we created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride. It will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part, and uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? 
Well, okay. So we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, So that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we remove them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, Without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and and, uh, debris, sediment. Uh, They're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. No one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. Um, It's on sale right now for their main unit, $177.00. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, sur- the survival spring uh, type uh, straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. Uh, this night was considered part of a, of a pageant of, of festivals that were, that were, you know, of course, pagan in origin. They were satanic in origin. And they were basically, um, you know, ways of celebrating the change of seasons. And, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, this is when the nights started getting longer and the weather started getting colder. And it was believed that on this night, or uh, Halloween night, that the God of the Dead was going to die and then be reborn later. And of course, he was reborn on the next feast, which would have been Yule, which is December 23rd, 24th, somewhere in there. And so this time that he was dying was a time of great fear in these people. And so the way they dealt with that is by human sacrifice. They felt that if they could shed enough blood, especially the blood of of children, uh, that they could somehow let this passing of their God be a propitious one. You know, and of course, it, this is all really evil, but we see it even in the Bible, the idea of Molech, uh, the idea of uh, Chemosh, the God of the Moabites, all these, all these different cultures all celebrated this festival by, um, by child sacrifice, by throwing babies into a flaming idol or something equally awful. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is the origins of Halloween. And the problem is, is that even to this day, it is still a high satanic holiday. It's still a high witch holiday. And that means if you're celebrating it, you're celebrating, you know, basically what, what some Satanists believe is the devil's birthday. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to do anything to celebrate about the devil. At some time, you know, in the early Christian era, the Catholic Church decided to try and sort of baptize uh, Halloween and they, they, uh, and Samhain, and they called it All Hallows' Eve. They associated it with All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day, which is November 1st on the liturgical calendar. You can't take something that's evil and, like, slap some paint on it, and all of a sudden it's good. You know, and the trouble is, is that in many cultures, I mean, this is kind of a universal thing, like many, many people might know that in Latino countries, they have the Day of the Dead on this day when people, you know, run around dressed up as skeletons and all of that. And it's very similar to Halloween. They just call it by a different name. And see, I don't think that we should be celebrating death. I think we should be celebrating life. Halloween was actually illegal in the days of the Puritans. It was really illegal all through the 18th and a lot of the 19th century in America. And it was only when the influx of Irish immigrants started in the 19th century. Some of my ancestors uh, came over here and they, they brought Halloween with them. And, and, you know, how in our country we see that things gradually have gotten more and more, you know, lax or whatever word you want to use. And so people began to celebrate. And of course, now it's become a huge marketing thing. I mean, they, they're trying to make it as big as Christmas. And uh, but the trouble is, again, it's evil. And uh, I would just like to share briefly why I'm so passionate about this. I had a personal experience with Halloween when I was 10 years old. And I was out trick-or-treating, 
And this was, you know, way back before there was anything really sinister about it. You know, I would, I think I was dressed as a little clown or something going door to door getting candy. And I actually was walking down the street. It was Halloween night, beautiful October evening in the Midwest. And I looked up and as I looked up, I saw the sky was just full of demons and just black leathery things with red eyes and their eyes just stared into me and I could feel something unclean hit my soul at that moment. And I believe at that moment, my soul was defiled by the demonic spirits that surround Halloween. And, you know, after that, I can look at my life, even as a young child, that I gradually began to be interested in the occult and, you know, various weird things. And by the time, of course, I was in college, I'd become a witch. So I think that the danger to children, especially because children are, are more, more vulnerable, but even to adults, it's a dangerous time. And we really encourage parents to pray over their children during this season, to not let their children run around alone uh, and to not let them go trick or treat, you know, but rather have some kind of fun that you can do as a family. Again, in the British Isles and in probably Northern Europe as well, there was this custom of lighting. They were originally called bale fires. And it related to Baal, who's, of course, a false god. We see Baal even in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And uh, they, would, they would use these as a way of trying to keep the sun god from dying, like we were talking earlier about blood sacrifice. And you're right, later on they became known as bone fires, and then over the, the years got cleaned up to bonfires because, you know, they, they would throw animals into it. They might even throw babies into it in some cultures. Uh, it, was a, it was not a good thing. And, you know, because, again, this is all about sympathetic magic, about about sending forth the lives of innocent beings so that this God, this supposed God, who, of course, is ultimately really Satan, can live. Back in the ancient times, the idea was is that the, these these satanic priests would go into a village and they would say we, they'd go up to a house at random in that village and they would, you know, put a mark on the on the door and say, you have to give us your youngest child or we'll destroy your house. And then we're going to take that child and sacrifice it to the dark god, Saman, who's the god of Samhain, the god of death. And uh, and of course, if the parents refused, then they would destroy the household. They'd burn the house to the ground. And and today, of course, it's more benign. And then the kids go and say, give us candy or we'll soap your windows or teepee your trees or something like that. But, you know, it's it's not a good thing. And again, you're 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 playing around with diabolical things and you're playing around with things that are rooted in human sacrifice, animal sacrifice and child sacrifice. They actually would take, you know, the, some of the, the remains of these poor, unfortunate children and they would make candles out of them. and They put these inside of either skulls or inside of large gourds or something of that nature. And uh, they would believe that if they pointed this grinning face outward, it would be a sign to the demons to leave this house alone. So it was kind of like a talisman to ward off evil. But of course, the problem is, is, again, you know, there's this very ancient, if you will, cult about the severed head which is present all over the Northern Europe, all over the British Isles, uh, and, and how it somehow relates to, well, in the British Isles, it relates to Bran, the blessed he's called, but in other countries, it relates to other, other various beings, uh, gods, demons, whatever. And it, it's all very evil. It's, it's, you know, I mean, would you want to have a thing burning on your doorstep that was made out of, you know, uh, human, human baby fat or something of that nature? Well, that was a sign that that house was okay then, that it had been, they'd offered up their tithes to hell, so to speak, in the form of their firstborn child or their, their youngest child, I'm sorry. And um, so that's kind of, you know, the meaning of that. And now, of course, we just see it as a sign of, of you know, of, oh, this house is going along with the Halloween thing. You know, it actually has a much more sinister origin. And see, what people need to understand is that these symbols have a power all their own.
I mean, you might say, well, it's just a pumpkin for heaven's sakes. Well, yeah, it is just a pumpkin. But you see, in, in magic, in, in black magic, in the occult, there's this idea of, of thought forms and egregores. That's the word that's used from Greek. And it means basically something that, that, that gets power all of its own over the centuries, over thousands and thousands of years of use. And it kind of demons and strong men come to 